Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and in this video I'm going to share with you the one big thing that I'm going to miss about Trump. And no, I don't mean it as a joke. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I've been no fan of Trump even from the beginning. I was highly skeptical of what his uh, presidency was going to be like. It lived down to my expectations, in my opinion. Uh, but there is something that I seriously really do appreciate about uh, his time in office, and I'm going to be sharing that with you. But first I want to explain the premise of this video, because I know um, there are many people out there that don't think that the election is over. They feel that uh, it's been stolen by Biden and that, you know, we need to count the votes and there's some sort of shifty behavior going on. Uh, you know, for something like that to be something that we could seriously uh, investigate, and I'm not saying that, you know, there's never any voter fraud. I'm, I'm sure there's examples of it here and there. Uh, but for us to think that that is re what's responsible for the election results, you have to think that the election results are so out of sync with reality that it merits an investigation of that type. And I would uh, suggest that they really clearly are not. In fact, they are so in line with reality that I made a prediction before the election results came in, uh, and it is exactly what it is, that we're a divided nation, it's going to be really close, but it's going to tip toward Biden. Now, that may not make any sense to you at all, uh, because maybe you live in an area that is pro-Trump, everybody around you is pro-Trump, so how could it not have been a landslide? Well, for every area like yours, there is an area like mine where... You know, Trump supporters are very few and far between, where it's exactly the opposite. And if you keep that in mind and know that, you know, there's some areas of the country that really go in one direction, some areas of the country that really go in another, and they kind of balance each other out, then the results of the election really are not all that surprising. So, you know, putting that behind us, the next president is going to be Biden, and the vice president is going to be Kamala Harris. And, uh, you know, let's talk about what I will miss about Trump because, again, like I said, if you've been watching my channel for a while, I've never been a big Trump fan, but there are a couple of things. Well, one thing in particular I'm going to highlight in this video that I really think he did great, and that is, is that the last four years, I don't know if you've noticed, but we have not started any new major military conf uh, uh, conflicts. Uh, he, uh, Trump was really reluctant to start new military engagements, and he had plenty of opportunities to do so. There were plenty of opportunities where, uh, you know, the experts were saying, go in, you know, we don't want to lose American credibility. You know, Iran was a, a circumstance like that. North Korea was a circumstance like that. There have been others. Uh, you know, and uh, military experts were saying, go in, you know, this is the only option. You have to do it. Trump didn't, and the world didn't come to an end. I really respect that. I don't know why he made that decision, because a lot of his rhetoric is all about, let's drop the bomb. I don't know if he literally said that, but that's sort of like his vibe is like, you know, if you're not with me, you're against me, and, you know, God save you if you're against me. Uh, but that was what, the way that he acted, and I really think that the world is better for it. I hope that going forward, politicians in the future can look to the, uh, the four years that Trump was in office when he had an opportunity to go into a military uh, you know, confrontation, uh, you know, turn things on hot in that way, and he neglected to do that. And again, the world did not come to an end, and there are people who are alive today who would not have been alive if Trump had decided to do that. I think the argument could made in, be made in the reverse as well. There are definitely people who might have been alive today had Trump not been in office. But at least in that one way, I really appreciate his, uh, his time in office. Uh, so that said, Biden is going to be the next president. I know a lot of people are really nervous about that. You know, they, the, uh, the media and, you know, you know, politicians have, you know, ratcheted up people's fear and anxiety about it. You know, it's like we're about to turn into a communist country. Uh, you know, I'm not super old, but I've been around long enough to know that these kind of fear-mongering things uh, happen every time there's a change of power. You know, people said that, uh, you know, George Bush uh, Jr. was not going to leave office. He left office. People said that uh, Obama was going to, you know, uh, try to go for a third term. He wanted to turn himself to a, in, into a king. It didn't happen. Uh, you know, with Trump, people said a lot of the same things. And while I think Trump is probably the closest uh, president we ever had that maybe would have liked to have turned themselves into a king, it didn't happen because we have checks and balances in our government. And we're going to continue to have checks and balances in our government going forward, even though we have a uh, candidate now uh, who uh, expressed themselves in a very progressive sort of way. We still have divided government. We have people within the, uh, our government that have different points of view, and the politicians know that. They know that, the, uh, you know, just because there's been a change at the top doesn't mean that everything under 
underneath is automatically going to flip upside down. Yes, there's going to be changes, but the way to deal with that isn't to think that we're headed for a new civil war. The way uh, to deal with that is to just continue to engage with your representative uh, officials, you know, continue to express your feelings. Uh, uh, and uh, you know, implore them to represent those uh, feelings uh, going forward. And uh, you know, really, don't worry about it too much. You know, we had four years of Trump. We're going to have four years of Biden. I, dude, so old. I can't imagine Biden going for another term after that. Uh, but even if he did, you know eight years, and then it'll be someone new. And that's the way our system works. That's the way our system is supposed to work. And the idea that we don't all agree with each other is just fine. That's the way our system uh, was intended to be. We were a system where uh, it was okay to disagree with each other, and you didn't have to go to civil war about it. In the past, countries, uh, you know, you know, in ancient history, if there was a difference of opinion, it went to armed conflict, and that's the way they solved it. We've kind of cracked that nut. We found another way of doing it, of expressing our beliefs in a way that doesn't lead to, you know, violence and bloodshed and death. And it's worked pretty well for a while. I'm not saying that, you know, America is going to be a, a country that'll just go on forever and ever and ever. Countries always tend to have a lifespan, but there's no reason to think that ours is about to uh, demi uh, you know, undergo its demise right now, just because, you know, we have a lot of differences of opinion. There are a lot of problems in the world, and that's what happens when there are a lot of problems. There's different people coming up with different solutions, and when you have lots of challenges, it's natural to have lots of different people having different opinions on how to meet those challenges. So don't worry about it. Keep prepping. There are all sorts of systemic problems that our civilization is facing, and just because we have new leadership doesn't mean all of those are going to be solved, and it doesn't mean it's the end of the world either. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you remember Remember what Trump did while he was in office, or rather what he didn't do? He did not start a bunch of armed conflicts. Let's try to bring that forward into the future. That's it. Thanks for watching. This episode is brought to you in part by Burning Hearth Homestead, a nonprofit that aims to provide seeds, live plants, and education to the community, both local and extended. Plant seeds, plant knowledge, plant the future. If you'd like to thank them for supporting this channel or find out more about what they do, go to burninghearthhomestead.org. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.